What's going on everybody? We're back for another HTML tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to apply a variety of different types of multimedia to your page from images to videos to slideshows to audio, a little bit of everything. And we're going to actually use the results of this assignment or activity for another one down the road when we start learning how to do responsive pages. So this one will be pretty important. Uh, in our folder, our Web1 folder, just to save time, I did kind of set some of this stuff up already. So I do have a multimedia folder in my Web1 projects folder. So you should make one in there also. And then in that folder, I have two other folders, one for audio, one for images. Uh, in order to create this page, I do have three images. So you can either use the ones that I gave you or you can use your own. I did optimize these for the web using Photoshop export for web legacy or if you find any of the online image web optimizers to make those smaller uh, because if I do go up here to uh, details from my files you can see the banner is the largest image and it's 172 kilobytes so all of them are very small for that so that's kind of a, a good thing to keep in mind for that to keep making those image sizes small that's part of the assignment part of the requirements for the assignment um, if I go up one level the other thing I have is this sound and I got this sound from bensounds.com and I'll have credit for it on my web page and I renamed it sound one for the same reason why I called my pictures like pick one pick two banner so it's all lowercase all one word easy to code uh, you can also get free sounds at pixabay.com slash music uh, you can they have all sorts of sounds on there that are free to use also so uh, feel free to take advantage of, of those or obviously unsplash with the images uh, pixabay has images too okay our index.html I do have this on here and it's already saved in the folder. This will be the only page we have for our assignment. So on here, you know, we do have the HTML tag right at the top all the way down to the very bottom. So be aware of that. Uh, for the head section, we have our title, which I just called multimedia. Medicare sets the same as it's always been for us. For the meta name and the content, I chose adding multimedia to our site just to make it relevant to what we're doing here. And I did go ahead and put the link to our CSS document in here. So our styles.css, that's what I always save my my default styles file as. And then the rel style sheet text CSS. And then uh, down here we have the body, which will go down to the bottom just right above the uh, the closing of the HTML I'll quit scrolling for you on there and then I have I have a page box <clears throat> excuse me and this div class equals page box goes right under the body up here and then it closes down here at the bottom right down there and then in the page box is where everything else is. So we have a header with an H1. I'm just calling this web page Multimedia Fans. A page for fans of multimedia or digital media creators, I guess. And then we have a nav. Slightly different than we've done it before, but I just wanted to show you some different ways how you can set up your nav menu. So the nav for the semantic tag there, but then I gave a class of this nav as top nav just in case I want to have multiple nav menus and then instead of an unordered list with our list items this one we just have our a links one for home content about us these little pound signs are just placeholders so if I do create my other pages eventually I can just replace the CSS in there and I have my class equals current which we used in our uh, in our internal and external embedded CSS lessons. After the nav, 
we have a big article and we've done it before where we had a section with articles in it but I've also seen it done before many times where someone has an article with multiple sections so I was just showing you how we could do that uh, we have four sections in it one of them has a h2 and a paragraph don't forget to close your paragraph there and then uh, HR underneath it for our horizontal rule and then our second one has a H2 that says large image and then we have some text to accompany it and we have our third section which says sound and I just put the sound the sound name and the song name which is called ukulele can be downloaded free at bensound.com just to give them credit for it and then our next one we have a section and I gave this section an ID because it's gonna behave a little bit differently than the others and I'll explain that later but uh, in this section with the ID equals slideshow we have just a h2 that says slideshow and the HR no paragraph and then underneath that the same kind of thing but for video so just a section with video and then the HR and there's that so that is our article with those four sections and then down here we have our footer with just a paragraph in it so make sure you have that saved as an HTML file index.html when I double click on it here in the folder it should look something like this and for my styles this is all I have just my comment at the top saying CSS document for multimedia demonstration and this is where we'll put our styles but as with make sure you save it as a cascade style sheet styles.css so it links with the other one and just as I always do with these pages I like to get all of the HTML knocked out of the way first and then once I have that done then we can kind of worry about the styles after that uh, so on here we'll we'll take a look at this going from top to bottom uh, you would think that we would maybe for the header we would do this first but because background image is a style and it's not really a an element we're putting in there so we'll leave that for later and then we'll go down here into our article and our first one on here is small image so in here I'll put this actually in the paragraph you can actually put images in paragraphs also so we'll do that here and then I'll put in my angle brackets and we've done images before so this one will be just a little bit of a review but I'll go IMG and SRC equals quotation marks images slash pick one dot JPG and this is gonna it's a picture of a microphone so I'm gonna go alt equals picture of microphone to make it more accessible for screen readers and another thing I'm gonna put in here too because this one's gonna behave a little bit differently so I'm gonna give it a class class equals and it's gonna be a small picture so I'll just call it small pick for short all right I'm gonna save that and we'll go to our browser here refresh and our image shows up there perfectly for us and that is great okay moving down to the next area we have our large image so I'm gonna go under here and what I'll do is I'll actually just copy this image up here and I'll paste it but because this is gonna be like a big picture I'll just replace small with big and then uh, this is going to be pick two from mine or whatever you saved your second image as 
This is a picture of a camera. So I'll type in picture of camera. And I'll save that. I'll open this up, make sure everything's working. Camera picture shows up in there. And now for the slideshow. So we're scrolling down here for this. And there is no real easy way to do a slideshow. I will be honest with you. Uh, so probably the easiest way I've, I've taught this a whole bunch of different ways. And this is the way that I have the least amount of problems with. If we go here, there's that W3 schools resource online. And I've kind of referred to it a few times within class. And you can search in there. And one of them is how to create a slideshow. And uh, the first one on here is Slideshow Carousel. And if you go here where it says Try It Yourself, I'm going to click on this. And they have all this code here. They use uh, internal embedded CSS for this. So uh, we're going to skip the style for right now. And then when we get down here to the body section of this, so no understanding how to read code really helps with this, we are going to copy this div of the slideshow container in here. So it says slideshow hyphen container. There's all of this information in there. And so we're going to copy that. And then here in our slideshow, underneath the H2, we're going to paste that underneath it. Okay. And there's a few things to look at. I am just going to use two pictures with mine. So to show you how you can edit this. Uh, when we when we look through these. Here's one of three it says. But I'm going to switch it to one of two. And then on this next one it says two of three. I'm going to switch this to two of two. So you can modify this to add more pictures or less pictures kind of your call obviously uh, this top one up here for the image source I'm going to use images slash pick one dot jpeg and then on this one down here I'm going to go images slash pick two dot jpeg so obviously you would use more pictures. You wouldn't use just the same pictures we have up here. But just to make this a little easier to work with right now, we'll do that. When we go down to this next one, we don't have a third one. So I'm going to remove that, okay? Obviously, if I wanted to, I could add another one in there if I wanted, right? But I just want those two on there, so that's fine. And then let me make sure this is correct. Yep. And then down here for this this little section here, there's current slide three. I don't have the current slide, so I'll remove that one out of there also. Okay, so I'll go ahead and I'll save that. I'm gonna go to my screen to my web page, and it's gonna look real goofy. Like it's going to stack them up here and we have these caption things and and things don't look right in there. And that's fine. We'll get it. We'll get it fixed later. But that is how you add your slideshow at this point in time. Um, another thing that we should that we can just do while we're thinking about it is in our little editor here you'll notice that there's this little JavaScript code uh, we can copy this and we'll just go from script to script we haven't done this in class yet but you can incorporate JavaScript in your web pages and it's kinda strange if you think about it but where you insert this is just before the end of the body in your HTML. I mean, you would think it would be up at the top. It's strange, but that's just how it is. So we'll click Save there, and it's our 
slideshow is still not going to work correctly because we need to put the styles in for it later but you can see it looks less weird right now with that all right so that looks good now we are ready to move on we'll scroll up for that and we will find our video so when we're dealing with videos the best way is to embed a video from an online source because video files are huge so up here I just found this free video from YouTube it's from code.org about creativity and if you go here to where it says share on a YouTube video and then there's this embed code we can click on that and here's the whole embed code up here we actually don't need this whole thing but I'm gonna copy it just to have it in there for us and if I min or if I go back here I'll minimize it and go back to my code and underneath my video h2 heading up here I'm gonna add a div and I'll go class equals quotation marks video underscore container that's in quotation marks and then I'll close it down here and then once we have that done then we can enter in this iframe that we copied from YouTube now there like I said there's all this information in here that we don't really need so we can actually take out everything before the source so the width and the height I'm gonna take that out and then everything after the quotation marks of our URL like so title frame border accelerometer autoplay clipboard right encrypted media all of this to the end of that right before that angle bracket I can remove also and it, it makes it a whole lot less intimidating to look at also I will say uh, so this is basically your iframe with your URL in there and then our closing iframe nothing goes in between there which you know you would you would think there would be something there but there isn't so uh, that's the iframe I'll save that and go to my web page and see how that looks when I scroll down I have my YouTube video in there so that works good and then where do we have oh, our sound up here that's the other one I kinda wanna jumped out of order just a little bit but our sound uh, we can put right here underneath our H2 and in here we'll put in some angle brackets and it'll say audio controls and then underneath audio controls we'll put some angle brackets and we're gonna go source space SRC equals quotation marks and this is in our audio file or in our audio folder so we'll go audio slash sound one dot mp3 was mine so uh, pay attention to what your audio is and the file extension is then after those quotation marks I'll go type equals quotation marks audio slash m slash mp eg uh, underneath that 
we're going to put in a little line here that says your browser does not support the audio element and this will show up if this doesn't show up up here so if the sound isn't there or whatever if that computer is incompatible you'll see that message instead and it'll let them know that their computer just they might need to install something or whatever and then we'll underneath that put in our slash audio to close up our audio controls item on there all right saving that refresh the page and here's our audio file this is looking pretty good so you know sometimes you'll notice when you go onto a web page and you'll see the web page you're used to seeing looks like this instead of how it's supposed to and what's happening is for whatever reason their their CSS isn't loading maybe it's just a slow internet connection maybe they're in the middle of updating it or whatever uh, but that kind of explains why those things happen in there that does it for the HTML and now we're ready for the styles on this so let's go over here to our CSS and at the very top we can start with body and we will use background hyphen color pound sign AHD1E7 semicolon and that goes in those fancy brackets and then I'm just going to check here to make sure that it is communicating with my HTML file and it is I have that blue color in the background uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some styles for that div that we called page box. So page box. And we'll go background hyphen. Holy cow. Page box. And then we'll go background hyphen color is pound sign FFF FFF for white and then we'll go width of 70 percent and then we can use margin of auto I just want to straighten this out a little bit make it look a little nicer there we go Now go to my page and refresh this. All right, so it's starting to look a little bit better here. All right, and then after that, we can go to the header. So I'll use header and my brackets. And in here, I'll go back ground hyphen image URL parentheses and then I want to use my single quotation marks on this one and I'll go images slash banner dot JPG and then to the side of that I'll use my semicolon make sure that it shows up here when I refresh it's starting to it's not looking how I want it to but it will eventually. So then underneath that, we can go uh, background hyphen size cover. And we'll go height of 300 px. So we'll just kind of define a height. I think in our last ones, we used padding around the H1, but we'll do this one a little bit differently. And then we are going to go position relative and this is going to help with uh, some of our alignment things with it so let me refresh that it's looking a little bit better yeah okay 
after the header, then I want the H1 that's in there to actually show up a little bit better. So I'll go H1. And let's make the font a little bit bigger. So we'll go font hyphen size 72 px. And then we'll go font hyphen family. And we'll use Helvetica Arial Sans Serif. So if Helvetica is not there, then we'll go with Arial. If Arial is not there, then we'll go Sans with the default Sans Serif. And then we'll go color because the picture is dark. Uh, so we'll switch that color to pound sign FFF, FFF. Let's see how this is looking now. A little bit better. And then we'll go position absolute so that way we can choose to put it where we want it to go and we're gonna say bottom zero and left zero so now with that position in the bottom and left to find it puts it down there kind of on that left hand side and it just looks a little bit better if I wanted to I could play with the uh, with the padding or margin in there and everything but for right now I think you get kind of the idea of of how that is in our last one I think we just used centered and we had the box around it but I kinda like this left line for for this look we're going for right here okay so that is done with our H1 and now we have our nav menu that we can style so we use that class called top nav so I'm gonna go dot top nav and I'll use my fancy brackets here and we'll go width of a hundred percent and then I'm gonna use margin zero padding zero background hyphen color is going to be pound sign 333 333 and I'm going to use floats left and font hyphen family I'll use the same one up here so I'll just copy this Helvetica Arial Sans Serif that should look nice in there uh, then we want to style the dot top nav a so just the actual uh, links themselves so we can go display is inline block and we'll go color is pound sign FFF FFF and we'll use text align center and then I'm gonna give this some padding uh, both directions this time this time so we'll go 14 px for the up and down padding and then we'll go 16 px uh, for the width and then we'll go text direction is none not text direction text decoration my bad text decoration none to make the link look not like an underlined hyperlink all right that looks a little bit better all right then we'll go underneath this and we can use dot top nav space a colon hover we've used this before uh, we'll go background hyphen color is pound sign one 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 and then we'll go dot current 
is going to have a background hyphen color of pound sign FFB 94A. Okay, that should do it for our nav menu. That looks good. On our last one, we did it to where when we hovered over this, it didn't change colors with that. This time, I think we might just leave it like this. If you want to change it, you can either go back to look at that other one, or here you could go colon, not current, and then you can not have the current one change. But you might like it that way, so I'll let you kind of decide what works best for you on there. Uh, next thing that we have underneath that is our H2s. So for these, we can go font hyphen family. And let's just go with the same one that we have up here. And we'll go with this, with this color. So we'll copy that one. We'll go color with that pound FFB94A. All right, that looks pretty good. And then after that, going down the line, we have this picture here that we need to do something with. It's way too big and it looks strange with the text right there. So we called that one dot small pick. And we'll go width is 33% and we'll go float left and we can even give it a little bit of padding we could say padding 3px all right so that looks good right there uh, we do obviously have these HRs that are going to cause us a little bit of a problem because they're floating up there. So we'll go down here and we'll select HR, HR, and then use our brackets. And we can go clear colon both. And that should slide that down below it. So that looks good. And the next one we have is our large picture. So we'll go to dot big pic. It's our big picture. And this one, uh, just to have it be responsive still and to have it always look good in there, we can go width of a hundred percent and then it fits it inside that page box it is a little bit big in there like that but it'll that's fine for right now and then after that we have this audio so just to make it a little bigger I don't know if I wanted to go from one end to the other you know, but I do want it to be bigger on that screen. So I can go like, um, audio was the name of the element and we'll go width of 50%. Let's see how that looks, if that's better. I do like that better. So our audio files in there, it does give you a little more control of how you're clicking that from one side to the other. So that's good. And then down here underneath the audio, now we have our slideshow again. So let's go back here. 
and we'll go back to this W3 Schools editor where we have this at. And at the very top, in the style section, we have this box sizing and all of this stuff. We are going to select that all the way down to the last of those. I'm sorry. Up here and down here to the last one before the end of style I'd scrolled down too far so in between the styles we don't want to select the style brackets we just want to select the code in between them and we'll copy that and going back here to our styles I'm gonna paste this in here the good thing about this is that they do have their documentation and their comments in there so that can kind of help you remember what those are and now let's look at this web page and we'll refresh this and now we have this is our like text up here where it says one or two and caption text and you click on this it takes you to the second one two of two caption two and then it takes you back to the first one so that's a easy way where you can do your slideshow and works pretty well we're gonna do some things with it that change it up a little bit later but you kinda of get the idea uh, for that I think it is a pretty good responsive for the most part slideshow and like I said there is a lot of code to it but we don't have to do like a whole lot of stuff with it uh, the last thing that we need to do for this page is going to be the code for the video. So down here, we'll screen this out a little bit. And uh, we'll go, this one has kind of a, a few different components for it. But the first one is dot video underscore container. And this information I just got by searching online for, it was in YouTube's documentation on how to embed a video to it. So there's no way I would have figured this out by myself. This is uh, from YouTube's resources. Uh, but what you do for the video container is you would go position relative and then we go padding hyphen bottom is 56.25 percent and then we have padding hyphen top is 30 px and then we have height of zero and we have overflow of hidden so again, all of that right there, that is from YouTube. I'm not smart enough to just figure that out on my own. You probably could if you troubleshooted it long enough and, and finally found the right values. Uh, the next one we have is for the iframe element. So this is for the container that holds the iframe, the video in there. And then this is for the iframe itself. So we'll go iframe, comma, and then dot, underscore, video underscore container object and then my fancy brackets and I'm going to use border none position absolute top zero left zero with 100% height 100% okay and then I'm gonna save that and go here and see how this looks and here our our video fits the width of of this page box that we created in fact, now at this point in time, everything does. And as we shrink it down, you'll notice here the multimedia fans 
still sticks out. This down here gets too small. Uh, those are things that we'll learn about when we start talking about responsive design when we use the same assignment. But for the most part right now, our stuff looks pretty good at multiple sizes. Uh, down here at the bottom, oh, I should say also, this YouTube video, uh, when you enter those in, sometimes, like, if you've ever made YouTube videos before, you know that there's the option that says allow other people to embed the video on their site. A lot of web, a lot of YouTube channels don't allow you to do that. If they don't, and you look at this, it'll say something like this video can't be shown or whatever. Code.org does allow you to do that. So that's one of the reasons why I used it in here uh, because they do allow you to embed those. Uh, so if that doesn't work, then you just need to find another uh, video from someplace else that does allow you to do that. So that can be frustrating at times, uh, but something to keep your eye out for. Uh, then, like I was going to say originally, finally, we have our footer down here at the bottom. So we'll go footer, font hyphen style is going to be italic and text align center. All right, saving it and looking at this. And there we have it. That is our web page with multimedia. Using images as floated images having an image take up the whole space, adding audio, adding images into a slideshow, embedding a video. Let me know if you have any questions. I appreciate you taking the time to watch, and we'll see you on our next video.